Um, the uh, subject I'm speaking on is uh, prayer or praying. Prayer or praying. We are a prayer, a believing church, aren't we? We believe in the power of prayer. There's power in prayer. And um, so I'm going to read a few verses at Acts chapter 9. Well, in fact, I have uh, a beginning in verse 1 and goes through verse 20. I'm going to read it. Then I'm going to give you some thoughts uh, uh, about the power of prayer. This is a thought I just wrote. Uh, let me give you a couple thoughts, and then I'll read it. Throughout the Bible, you will find men and women praying. Throughout the Bible, you will find men and women praying. I wrote a few names of people who prayed prayers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Ruth, Naomi, David, Solomon. Many of the prophets themselves that you can read in, uh, throughout the Old Testament. Daniel in the lion's den. Remember, he prayed, opened the window. Uh, uh, it was, uh, was it Darius that said uh, they, made a rule, they made a law that nobody could pray to anybody's other god than the god somehow they'd set up. And Daniel still opened up the window that where he prayed and, and prayed out there anyway. And they got thrown into the lion's den. Of course, that was a trick. You know that. That was a trick by the other religious leaders who worshipped other gods, or worshipped the new god, or, or uh, whatever they did. And so they did not like the idea that Daniel worshipped only one god, the one true god. And so they set up a ploy, if you would, and said, uh, you know, at a certain time, no one could pray to any other god, and Daniel purposefully opened the windows or shutters or went out on the balcony, whatever he did, and was seen by others who saw him pray to his God. And when he did, he had to face the consequences, and that was to be thrown into the lion's den, but he prayed. And he, I'm sure he prayed in the lion's den also. And, uh, but then the three Hebrew children all prayed. You all know the story of the three Hebrew children. They prayed. So uh, we have... Uh, uh, prayers by men and women that are recorded in the Bible. Even Jesus prayed. Yes. Jesus prayed. Jesus even taught his disciples to pray. Right. He taught his disciples to pray. Yes. You know, uh, here's a prayer we all pray. Our Father which art in heaven, right. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And uh, let us, let's see, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus taught us to pray. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. So I believe prayer is important, and I believe that prayer is powerful. And here's a little thing I wrote a long time ago. A man is never bigger or taller than when he's on his knees. Amen. And then I asked this question. What will bring you to your knees? What will bring you to your knees? And there are things that happen in our lives that will bring us to our knees. And if not physically to our knees, at least uh, mentally and emotionally, it brings us to our knees. Amen. All right? Now, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And I'll begin reading in verse 1 and read down through verse 20. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, that was eventually his name would be Paul, but Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priests, 
and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, he's talking about find any of this way, he's talking about Christian people. He's talking about Christian people. If I find any Christians, anybody following this man Jesus, if I find any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Amen. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. The idea there was, Saul, you're only hurting yourself by Amen. doing what you're doing. You're hurting yourself. It's hard to kick against the pricks. Amen. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Is that not a powerful question? Amen. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That's what Saul is saying here. There's conversion is, is taking place right here. Yes, sir. Then verse 7, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, that is, he was blind, yes. and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named uh, Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. In other words, the Lord spoke to Ananias also. Uh, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, listen to this. This is the idea. Behold, he prayeth. Saul is praying. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord... I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So Saul's reputation, reputation goes before him. Yes. He's not a good man. He doesn't have a good reputation, at least against Christians. Amen. And he's heard about him. And so I'm thinking that probably he's wondering, are you sure I'm supposed to go see this guy? I mean, he's been arresting, he's been abusing, maybe even killing Christians. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, let's see, verse 14, and here he hath, and that is, I hear, I hear he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. In other words, he is to carry the gospel to everyone. He's to go out and carry the gospel to everyone. He's just naming the different peoples. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, putting his hands on him, said, now look at this, Brother Saul. Yeah. <laughs> He's converted like that, man. Brother. You know, Brother Saul. Amen. That's kind of the way we refer to each other, isn't it? When we're out and about, Amen. brother, 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 sister, sister. Mm -hmm. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, hath appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, and hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. I got a little thought on that in just a minute. I think you're going to like it. At least I think it's going to be informative. I'll say it like that. And immediately, 
there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. You get saved, you're supposed to get baptized, aren't you? Yes. When you get saved, you're supposed to get baptized, is that right? Praise. You got saved the other day, didn't you? And you're, going, you're ready to get baptized. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. When he had received meat, he was strengthened. That is, when he got fed, he was hungry. You know, he went three days without food. And now he's getting fed, and he was, uh, now he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway, he preached Christ. Hallelujah to that. Straightway, Robert, he started preaching. He started preaching as soon as he got saved, nearly as soon as he got saved. That's something that don't usually happen, is there? Amen. Uh, hey, I got a story to tell you about that. Just remind me, I think the Lord gave it to me to give to y'all. There was a guy that I led to the Lord who was kind of a, he was a, a drunk, uh, kind of mean kind of guy, beat on his wife. He was kind of a mean guy. And he had gone to church, kind of a, well, anyway, he went to church, but somebody had told him that when he got saved, he had to preach. Oh my he was terrified of standing in front of people. So, the result of that was he simply would not make a decision to accept Jesus because he was terrified of having to stand before people and preach a sermon. Oh, no. And so one night I had the privilege of talking to him about the Lord. I told him how it was with me. And I just gave a personal testimony. And before I was over with, that guy knelt there and prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart. It was a wonderful evening, but he didn't have to preach, although his salvation preached a good sermon because it actually took a hold of him. It actually changed his life. And his wife thanked me from then on. Thank you, Brother Paul. But it wasn't Brother Paul. It really was the Spirit of God. It was Jesus who saved him with the power and help of the Spirit of God, of course. I don't know how I got off on that, but anyway... When, uh, you, when you get saved, you get saved. And if you, you, the Bible tells you to grow. You may never preach a sermon except for the fact your life preaches a pretty loud sermon most of the time. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, let me see if I can get some things here. We're talk I said I was going to talk about prayer. <laughs> James said, the prayer of a righteous man, and I'm going to add the word woman, the righteous man or woman availeth, much. Amen. It is the prayer of the repentant heart that will enjoy the presence and the mercy of a loving God. Amen. A prayer of repentant, a prayer of repentance. God, forgive me of my sin. Yes. God, forgive me. Yes. Uh, I, I think we are perhaps a little closer to God than we think when we come to that place of repentance. Um, we will enjoy the presence of a loving God when we find that place of repentance. Yes. And listen to this. It isn't the threat of God that brings a person to a point of repentance. It is the goodness of God Amen. that brings a person to repentance. Yes, you see, God is good. Amen. And you say, wow, God is good. And it brings you to a point of, of, of prayer of God, forgive me for being what I, you know, a, a, a sinner. Yes. And we're saved, of course, by God's amazing grace. But it is by the goodness of God that we will find a place to repent. Hey, man, thank you, sweet B. It was the publican who was standing far off, who would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, who smote upon his breast, saying, he didn't look up, he looked down. He would not look up toward heaven. He was repentant, and he looked just, oh, God, forgive me. 
God be merciful to me. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh my goodness. And then Jesus said, I tell you that that man went down to his house justified rather than the others. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. It is recorded in our text that we just read in verse 11, where the Lord Jesus said to Ananias, listen to this, this is so powerful. Ananias, you'll find Saul at the house of Judas praying, yes. praying. Amen. How would you like to have a testimony of that, Harry? You'll, fi you'll find Harry uh, over at so-and-so's house praying. He went over there to pray or we went down to the church even to pray, which is fine. You know, I went to church. I wanted to pray, and I felt more comfortable at church yes. praying. And that's the testimony here he has. You'll find him, Ananias. He'll be praying. How would you like to have a testimony of being a, a, pray, a prayer warrior? Amen. And here's what he says. The Lord simply says it this way. For behold, he prayeth. Yes. Yes. He's praying. There's a song about that, isn't there? Somebody's praying praying for you and me. Something like that. Somebody's praying. Amen. And here he is in reference, the man that's, who says praying, he's in reference to Saul of Tarsus, the man who right before he met the Lord, right before the Spirit of God came upon him, right before all that, he was cursing God. He hated Christians. He persecuted them. He was putting them in prison, perhaps even murdering them. I don't know. But I know he treated them terribly. And now that which he hated, now he loves. That which he hated, now he loves. Whoa, what a change. That make a good song. There's a change in me. <laughs> a true story. This is a true story about a man who was a persecutor of the church who was transformed yes, yes. by the power of God. Yes, sir. Sometimes in our own lives, we have seen the power of God change the hearts of those who war against God's people or the church. Yes, sir. He changes them from warring against the church to being soldiers of the cross. Yes. They take up his cross and follow him. The Holy Spirit has power to transform yes. the foe into a friend. Amen. Boy, I don't like him. The Lord has the ability to change that into uh, now love. That which I did not like, he can change that into that something I love. It is out of darkness that the light of the world will shine the brightest. We're living in a dark world, folks. But let me tell you something. I know we look at it now and we see a lot of things going on that we don't like. But that's been going on ever since the church started. If you're doing anything for the Lord, I'm telling you, the devil is going to come at you. Amen. And if you give your heart and life to the Lord anywhere along the path of your journey, all of a sudden you're going to find out that Satan is a real powerful uh, entity. Amen. He will go on the attack. Yes, sir. But aren't you glad we have the power of the Word of God? Yes. And here I think he said that he was filled with the Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? And I thought, now, what does that mean to fill, to, to be filled with the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost. And I said, well, exactly kind of how's that work? Well, it's sort of like the Holy Ghost moves you. Amen. Moves you along on your journey of life. Yeah. Any of y'all ever, I heard this uh, some time ago. 
Any of y'all have ever been out on the lake and seen a sailboat? The spirit is like the wind. The wind. Right? It takes wind to move that sailboat. And the Holy Spirit is like the wind. And when the wind blows and fills that sail, that, that boat is moved along, right? Moved along. And when that Spirit of God moves into you and fills your heart, the Holy Spirit power moves you along on your journey. Right? It moves you along on your journey and through life. Sometimes you say, I don't even know why I did it. Well, maybe it was the Holy Spirit moving you. I don't know. We don't know. Why did I join that church? I don't know. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit moving you. Why did I get saved? Probably because the Holy Spirit was moving you. Why did I surrender my life? Probably because the Holy Spirit was moving you. Filling you like the, like the sail on the ship. has got to be filled and pushes it along. The Holy Spirit moves you. Sound, sounds pretty good anyway. <laughs> we must never be ashamed or embarrassed to be associated with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nor should we be embarrassed or ashamed to be moved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> we must never... Scott, we were talking about this in the, in the deal. We must never surrender the truth for gain or popularity. That's right. The foes, the foes, the enemies of the church are both on the outside and on the inside. That's right. Amen. The enemies of the church are both on the outside and on the inside. Outside is kind of expected, right? Yes, sir. Kind of expected. But on the inside, I'm not quite for sure, but I do know when the enemy has, has uh, crept on to the inside, they can cause much damage. Amen. And I will tell you, I just read, and I was telling Harry and uh, Scott about it, I just read, and I don't read, I don't give you this and gloat, I give you this in sorrow. In sorrow, I tell you this, one of the very large mega churches just closed its doors because of improprieties over the last six or seven years. How sad that is. Much damage is done from the inside out. People who I think attack from the outside are kind of like what we talk about when we say these words. Satan is like a roaring lion. Yes, sir. We say that. Yes, sir. We believe that to be true, right? Amen. He's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And I think that's more from the outside, but then on the inside, he is like a wolf in... You all know that. Yes, sir. Either way, Satan attacks the brethren and the church. Yes, sir. And then I ask this question. Do we have to worry about any of that today? Yeah. Yes, we do. And here's the way I looked at it. With all the technology... And all the access we have to information, you say, shouldn't we be better off and better equipped to handle those attacks? You might think that it, that should be so, but the same equipment that you use, Satan also has access to that equipment. Amen. And Satan is a hack. <laughs> he hacks into your information and he steals it and distorts it. Hey. He's a thief yes, and he steals from you. He distorts the truth throughout the entire world. Amen. The Christian church and God's people are under attack. Amen. You can read for yourself 
of different things that go on throughout the world. Uh, uh, years ago, y'all remember, of course, you remember when Iraq was in the news a lot. Remember when Iraq was in the news? Yep. Iraq had a population of 11 million Christians. They were all persecuted. But when they decided to uh, purge Iraq, out of 11 million Christians that lived in Iraq, they discovered only 1 million of them left. And they don't know except perhaps they scattered, but many of them were killed in Iraq. They suffered because simply they had faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And religion, regardless of how friendly they say they are, religion is not the friend of Christianity. That's true. Solomon said, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Amen. I don't care if that's in Iraq, uh, Africa, Russia, China, or America. That's right. It makes no difference. Right. Here's a letter I received a few years ago. I received it from our missionary up there on the board that we've supported for about 25 years. I received a letter from a missionary named Danny Jones. He lived and he worked building churches winning people to Christ nearly all his life in the town of Monterey, Mexico. That's where his parents were missionaries. He grew up there, he got married, and he went back and continued his father's work there in Monterey, Mexico. He wrote a letter and told all his participating churches that the drug cartels were targeting Christian churches. Many of his people were threatened and harassed, even robbed while they were at church. Some of them were so bold that they would force them uh, themselves in, or force their way into some of their churches and robbed everyone present. We look at that as something terrible, don't we? Yes. I, I do. He wrote that letter, I, you know, telling us what was going on there in Monterey and throughout Mexico. Some of their pastors of some of the churches that they had established and trained some people to be preachers and pastors in the churches that they established. Some of their pastors were captured and held for ransom. And on top of all that, the Mexican government did nothing about it. Oh, this type of persecution continues to grow throughout the world, even, uh, even today. So I would admonish you, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Yes. We must learn to trust in God. To lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is better to trust in God than to trust in man. Amen. It is better to trust in God than to trust in our president or our government. Amen. We're warned of things on the outside, and we're warned about the wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes. I will give you this thought, and we'll close. But let me tell you, through it all, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us, and we need the power of prayer to help us defend ourselves against these kinds of things. Amen. Oftentimes, when Satan attacks, and especially when he attacks from the inside, 
from inside the church. He has done much damage before he is recognized. And if a good, loving pastor speaks out, sometimes he seems like the bad guy. In other words, that which is evil sometimes is called good. And sometimes that which is good is called evil. One more thought. Usually, when someone has caused harm and damage from the inside, it's hard to bring them to a point of repentance. I'm not saying it's impossible, but they've heard the truth many times and have hardened their hearts against the Lord and against the work of salvation. Salvation has come to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. It's as simple as that. And to those of you who are watching by way of YouTube, let me tell you, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, you need the Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm going to stop right there. And God bless you. And thank you for being here tonight. Let's take time to pray.